guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing a Halloween themed project. Now I'm not starting my Halloween themed videos yet. This is kind of more of a prequel but an accidental prequel because this week's video was supposed to be something else. Kind of didn't get to finish it. So we're going to do this video and then go back to normal videos and then start Halloween videos. <laughs> Anyways, today's project we are going to be working on a sandworm from Beetlejuice. So let's get started. Okay guys, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to do the sewing for the body. Now this is extremely easy and it can actually be easier than how I did it. I just didn't have the right material so I kind of had to do a little bit of extra work for it. So basically our pattern is just a very long piece of paper and then it's tapered off at the end. I've got it broken up into different segments to show where the stripes are going to be. Now if you want to make this a lot easier, basically you just need to find some black and white striped fabric. I didn't have any around, but I had plenty of white and black fabric, and I felt like just using what I had around instead of buying something extra. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make myself some striped fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some white and black fabric and make little strips of it, and then I'm going to sew those together. I'm going to do that to all of the different pieces, and then I'm going to continue adding them together until I get a long strip for each side of the body. Once I have my two strips of fabric, I'm going to pin these together and then I'm going to draw out my pattern where it tapers off at the end. Now since I'm working with black and white fabric, I had to use a white pencil and just a normal pen, that way I could see my pattern drawn on the fabric. So I'm just going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to follow those lines, making sure that I have the fabric tapered off at one end. Also make sure that you're leaving one end of the fabric open, that way you can flip it right side out. You're basically just making a long sock with no heel. After I'm done sewing, I'm going to cut off the extra fabric and flip everything right side out. See, I told you the body was super simple, now we're going to start on the clay face. Now this part has a lot of detail, so I'm going to focus a lot of my time on making it correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do to make our sandworm's face is I'm actually going to start with making the tongue for the sandworm, because I'm going to have the inner mouth open so you can see all the different teeth and things. So basically all I did was I took a bent piece of wire, I bent it into the rough idea of a little wiggle so it didn't have just a straight line, and then I covered that in clay. The next thing I did is I used my tools to kind of make some stripes on the clay, and that's basically the whole thing for making the tongue. I'm going to bake this for probably about 25 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit, that way it's completely baked and we can add it to the face later once we have more of the clay done. While I'm at it, I'm also going to be making some teeth for our face. So I'm going to roll out a bunch of balls of clay and make some little cones. These I'm going to bake with the tongue. After those are done baking and have cooled to touch, we can start on the actual face itself. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make the core of the face. That way the whole thing isn't made out of solid clay and it's not super heavy. So I'm going to be using tin foil and I'm just going to roughly shape it into the idea of what I want the face to look like. Now because I have the mouth open, I need to make a top and bottom jaw. So I'm just going to be making a piece of tin foil for each jaw and I'm going to be gluing those tin foil pieces to another piece of tin foil to make an open kind of V shape. Once I was happy with how the tin foil looks, I'm going to move on to covering this completely in clay. I'm going to be using original Sculpey for this. So I'm going to use my rolling pin and I'm going to flatten out some nice sheets of clay and I'm going to start layering this on top of my foil. I'm going to make sure everything is completely covered in clay and I'm going to use my fingers and tools to blend everything together and smooth the surface. After I have everything completely covered in clay, I can now add the tongue to the inside of the mouth. So I'm going to take that piece that we made earlier, I still have a wire sticking out of it, I did shorten it a little bit, and I'm just going to push it into the clay and make sure it goes right into the foil as well. So I'm going to push that in place, make sure I like the position of it, and then we're going to start adding teeth to the mouth. Now this is the inner mouth, and I'm going to make these a lot smaller, so these were not pre-baked. These are just going to be little balls of clay, I'm going to lay it across the surface. I'm going to do this to both sides of the jaw, just going all the way around it, and of course using my tools to straighten everything out and spread the teeth apart and make sure they're nice and pointed. Now for the more inside mouth that we're working on, a lot of the gums kind of show, so I'm going to make a lip around the teeth, but I'm going to make it kind of pulled back so we can have some pink gums around the teeth later. So I'm just going to take a strip of clay for each side of the jaw and I'm going to lay that out and blend it in and make sure to just position it where I want it. 
Once I'm done with the first mouth, we need to add some eyes to this. So I'm going to take some balls of clay and some strips of clay. I'm going to push the balls into the face, and then I'm going to use the strips of clay to make the eyelids. After that, I realized I needed to remove a little bit of extra clay that's built up around the base of my face. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then we can start adding the outer mouth around this face. For the outer mouth, I did very similar to how we kind of covered everything in clay. I just took my clay and I rolled it out with a rolling pin. I made a sheet of it, kind of cut it to fit as a shape of a jaw, kind of a triangle with a rounded edge. And I'm just going to push it onto the face and lay it out. I'm going to do this to both sides of the face, make sure I like the position of it. And then I'm going to add the teeth to it that we baked earlier. And of course, just like the other mouth, we need to make a lip, so I took some strips of clay and I went around the edges of that. And then the last little bit of detail that we need to do is we need to add some eyes to the outer face. So I'm just going to roll out some larger balls of clay than we used for the previous eyes, and I'm going to push them into the clay and blend them. I'm not going to be adding eyelids to these eyes because they're a lot more bug-eyed, and I'm also going to actually be covering the outer face with fabric, so it kind of looks a bit more natural since the body is going to be fabric. I want the outer face to be fabric as well, and I'm going to make the eyelids out of that. So I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 55 minutes. It's a lot of clay, so I want to make sure it's baked all the way through. Once our face is out of the oven and as cooled to touch, we can start on the painting. Now the first thing I needed to do was I actually needed to primer everything a white because there's actually a lot of white and black and it's just going to be a lot easier to start with a nice white surface. So I'm going to go over everything with white and then we can start adding more details to it. Now the easiest way to add details to this is to start from the inside working our way out because there's so much to this face you're going to end up bumping things and even while I was doing this I ended up bumping quite a bit and having to go back and touch things up. So it's just going to make it a lot easier if we start from the inside out. So I'm going to start with the inside inside mouth and we're going to paint the inside of that a nice pinky kind of skin color. I'm also trying to do my best to keep it off of the tongue while I'm doing this. The tongue itself is going to be striped black and white, so there's a lot of white and I don't want to get any pink on it. And then I'm also going to be painting the outer gums a nice pink color as well. Once that's dried, I'm going to move on to painting the black stripes on the tongue. Now this I did have to go back and forth a little bit because again it's just in there really deeply into the mouth and it's really hard to just get your paintbrush in there and not bump things. So I did end up bumping quite a bit of stuff while I was painting the tongue. So again don't be surprised if you have to touch things up as you're painting other parts of the face. And then after the tongue I'm going to be painting the first set of teeth. Now these teeth are actually kind of like a dyeing color, like a, like rotted teeth. So they're kind of like a kind of brownish yellow color. So I'm going to be painting those first. And then after I was done with those teeth, I let them dry. And then I'm going to actually start adding some shadowing in between the two different faces. Because one is overlaying the other, you want to make a nice shadowing. Otherwise, it kind of looks a little weird. So I'm just going to kind of add some kind of blackish gray in between. And I'm going to use my brush to kind of blend it into the white paint that we already have on the face. Don't be surprised if you have to go over your white a little bit to brighten it up afterwards because the black does spread to absolutely everything. And it's going to kind of come off a little bit more gray than white. So yeah, after I added the shadows, I did have to touch everything up after it dried. Okay, so now we're painting the first pair of eyes, and these are a nice yellow with a black pupil. After that, I finally started adding that green color that really makes the sandworm pop. And basically, I'm just going around the lips. I'm going to do the inside lips first. I'm going to wait on the outer lips until after I get a little bit more detail finished. So now I'm going to be painting those teeth that are on the outer mouth. Now these are really kind of difficult because they're actually striped black and white just like the tongue. So it took quite a bit of effort to get those little stripes on there and I did have to touch it up and change it up a little bit here and there and it, it took me quite a bit of time to get the teeth done for this. But then after that I just needed to paint the outer lip that green color. And then the final bit of painting was the last pair of eyes are going to be a nice red color. Now remember, we're not painting the outer part of this face anymore. The rest of it's going to be covered in fabric. 
So I'm going to apply a nice layer of resin over everything to protect all the paintwork that we did. I'm going to let it sit because it needs to dry for about 24 to 48 hours, and then afterwards we can put everything together and finish our sandworm. Okay, it's the following day and we can start putting our sandworm together. So I'm going to start by taking that body that we sewed earlier and I'm going to stuff the whole thing. After that, I'm going to start adding a little bit of the fabric to the face. So I'm going to start with black first and then the white stripes are going to go over this. So I'm just going to be using some E6000 glue. I'm going to paint it onto the clay, just making a nice layer of it. And then we're going to push the fabric into place and make sure the edges are nice and straight. I'm going to do this to the top and bottom jaw. I'm going to let my glue dry a little bit and then we're going to add a wire to the head. This is basically going to make it to where the body can be poseable. So it's really simple, it's just a long strip of wire that's measured out to the length of the body and I'm just going to glue it inside of the head. After that we're going to take the fabric body and we're going to run it over that wire. And then the last little bit we need to do is we need to glue the fabric for the body around the neck of the face. So we're just going to take that fabric, we're going to use our E6000, probably a little hot glue here and there, and then we're just going to glue it around the face. Now I will need to cut a little bit of the fabric to go around the eyes, but that's really not too much trouble. So I'm going to get all that fabric glued into place, and then we're going to let that dry, and then after everything has dried, we are all finished. Okay guys, and that's how I did a sandworm from the movie Beetlejuice. I had so much fun making this and I can't wait to start other Halloween projects. Now I do want to remind you, tomorrow we're going to be doing the last video on making my giant griffin, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!